So, we're going to start with a really simple question. What are comics? And I don't mean like, have you ever heard of comics? Um, what do you think they are? But like, we can talk about comics um, in terms of a lot of different histories. Um, because comics exist at the interstice of several histories of technology, art, and literature. Comics are sequential art, they are a social media, and they are a form of... So when I say that they're a sequential art, what do I mean? Here we have an example of hieroglyphics, and I use this to show you that we can trace the history of comics back a very long way if we think of it as a sequential art. A sequential art is a form that relies upon meaning accruing through the connection across multiple iterations. So, uh, in a way, film is a sequential art if you think of it as, as um, in terms of its cells that you have to watch in order to, uh, to create a narrative. Hieroglyphics are a sequential art, and if you look here, so what that means is that, okay, you have oh, individual images, you have a bird, you have a beetle, you have a bull, um, and those might have some meaning, but they don't have narrative meaning. So it is when you place these objects in relationship to each other that the work acquires narrative meaning, and sequential art uh, strives for meaning that accrues over time and space. And you can see here, that as with comics, there are modes of technology that are used to direct your reading. So you see these lines here, they, uh, and even these kind of circles here, these function almost as the frames or cells that you might find in a comic. And they, they cause you to read in a certain way. So you would read typically here um, from one direction, which appears to be marked across the page, so to speak. And by page, I just mean um, the, the frame of what we're looking at. And so this would be a form of reading. Um, you could, of course, skip around. And one thing that's really interesting about the comic and the hieroglyphic is that before you begin to read, you uh, get a larger impression, an impression of something that is greater uh, than the sum of its parts, because the first thing you see is a page that is full, as opposed to when you're reading, you might see that there are, uh, that the page is full of, of literature, of, of letters, but you don't, until you begin to read, isolate those letters. So you might see, okay, there's a page full of, of words, but you don't know the words, so you don't imagine them until you, uh, until you begin to read them. What's a social media? Well, every technology is a kind of media. A media means delivery device. So uh, comics are a media because they deliver information, and they're social because they're shared. So of course Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, these are social medias that we we call social medias, and that's how that kind of term arose. But comics, TV shows, films, uh, books, these are all social medias. They are all devices and technologies, including language. Language itself and written language are technologies that are designed for the sharing of ideas, the provocation of emotions, the recording of events, the preservation of information. They are social because they are there not for the creator on their own, but for communication of uh, something to someone else. And their literature. So here we have Art Spiegelman's Mouse. Literature is, um, is stories. It's, that's all it really is. It's narrative that is encompassed in language and expressed and embodied in language. 
So you might say, okay, well, I thought literature meant that it was um, that it was written by very special people, or that it was exceptionally good writing. Well, those are um, those are things that you might project onto literature, and they might be what an individual means when they talk about literature in quotes. But literature is work that can be read. It is for the literate. It is communication um, via literacy. Now, what is bitchlet, and why would I use it? So that's an interesting question because it really depends who you ask. If you look it up, you'll find uh, on urban uh, urban lit sites that it's. Uh, something that is derogatory. Like chiclet, it is an expression that is used to insult women's writing. Um, and as you see here, it's often suggested to be lightweight, badly written, anti-male, which I notice is underlined and bolded, fiction written for women by women, usually attempts and fails to be witty or whimsical. So it's a, it's a really derogatory um, way of referring to women's writing. Uh, the idea is that the, this kind of literature, literature that's written by women for women, doesn't have great social value for the larger population. And um, it isn't written well, and it isn't of very large interest. So what you can see here as well is that the examples given, Bridget Jones, Jones Diary and Sex in the City, are typical examples of the bitch lit genre. This is interesting because these are very, very successful works. So you can see right from the start that bitchlet is a backlash expression. It is a colloquial expression that is used to, um, to take women writers down a peg or two. So what happened uh, is that women began to embrace that expression and suggest that there might be another way of looking at the expression bitchlet. And uh, then Mary Sherratt and Maya Chowdhury created an anthology of works, and their description of bitchlet is smart and subversive celebration of female anti-heroes. These are stories about women who take the law into their own hands, who defy society's expectations, put their own needs first, and don't feel guilty. And then she references quite a large number of works that go back um, deep into history, right? And characters that go back deep into history to suggest that uh, the villains of the women who were villains in historical texts could be seen as kinds of heroes if the stories had been from their points of view. And so what this does is draw attention to the use of the word bitch and to suggest that it can be used in multiple ways. So I decided to call this course Bitchlet because I wanted to emphasize works that are uh, newer, that are uh, genre changing, that explore points of view that have not been typically represented in the large traditional comic book publishing industry. So I wanted books that were written by women that have uh, very difficult or complicated women heroes that examine the position politically, socially, and personally of women in time, and also that looked at the um, the potential for shifting the gaze, and we'll talk more about the gaze soon. So the works that we're going to look at are all by women, although they are, of course, in many cases, are collaborations. Uh, sometimes comic books have multiple um, people involved in, in the drawing, the inking, the writing, and the lettering. And they are often works that feature um, subversive figures, subversive social figures, or women in subversive social positions. So for example, uh, when we start with Bitch Planet, there is uh, this is a storyline about women being sent to, women being criminalized 
and sent to a planet that is a penitentiary where they are um, where there is an attempt to try and control and reprogram them. Uh, when we look further at um, other works, you'll see other things. So that's the end of this particular uh, slideshow. Let's see. Stop.